Okay, so here is the plan of attack. This is the release bearing actuator fork, which if we go over to the bell housing, this way please, Mr. Cameraman. When you, when you um, put your foot on the clutch, this moves forward. And just stay there. That moves forward. It pushes this bearing forward like this. So when you put your foot on the clutch, that goes out. It pushes that bearing forward. When you take your foot off the clutch, that bearing goes back. As you can see, the bearing is not sitting on the shaft. It's, it's, it kind of sits there. It spins, and what happens is when it meets the, the pressure plate, which is spinning at the same speed of the engine, this and it spins to, to just so it matches speed. It pushes the pressure plate in. The pressure plate disengages. The clutch plate is then loose, and so you've decoupled. So let's pretend this. Let's pretend this is the shaft coming out of the gearbox. The input shaft. The input shaft. So, so here would the here would be the gearbox. Can here, I come up? Yeah. Here's your clutch release bearing. It sits there. When you put the clutch in, the clutch. And don't forget, this is spinning. The re release bearing makes contact with these three fingers, like hard. You can't move it with your hands. These fingers, these fingers go in and it releases the pressure on the clutch. The clutch is clamped between the pressure plate. This is the clutch plate, the friction plate. That sits there like that. When you push the clutch in, these things go in. The pressure is released and the clutch is then free to free wheel. So you can change gear and whatever it is you want to do. So we are now... We're going to take this off. We're going to take a look at the clutch plate. Obviously, this comes what out. What is that? This is the centering tool for when we put it back together. Because there's no shaft to put this on, and we can't put it on the other side of the engine and then try and make them up. When we put this all back together, this will go in to keep things centered, and we'll put the clutch plate and the pressure plate on over that, tighten it all down, and it should be centered. So this will come out now. We're going to take this off. We'll take the clutch plate out. Have a look at it. We'll inspect the surface of the flywheel, which is the part of the engine which the clutch engages with. We'll determine whether or not it needs grinding or turning. Probably doesn't. It's only got 29 horsepower and not very many kilometers on it. Then we're gonna take this flywheel off and look behind it to see if the um, main crank bearing, which I've got a seal here somewhere, there's a seal behind here on the crankshaft where it comes out of the engine, an oil seal. We're going to check the quality of that. If it needs changing, we'll change it. If it's okay, we probably won't change it. Because it's a good opportunity. To it, it's a good opportunity. So if we're doing all of this simply because this bearing is worn. And you probably can't hear it. But but and the reason there's no, the race is destroyed. That, everything's protection. destroyed. Yeah. yeah. And the reason this is gone is we believe is that the previous owner needed to replace the clutch cable. Yeah. Needed to replace the clutch cable and put one in which was too short. The left-hand drive. He put in the left, well, it, it looks like a left-hand drive one which has been botched because none of the fittings yeah. are, are, are the same. For any two CV owners, make sure you use the left. The, yes, yes. If you, if, if you have a two CV and you've got a right-hand drive one, make sure you get the right-hand drive clutch cable because the left-hand drive clutch cable is like 11 millimeters too short. And what it means is if you put a left-hand drive clutch cable in this thing, we think the release bearing wasn't releasing. It was riding. And destroys itself. And it destroys itself because it's not, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's not lubricated. It's one-time lubricated. It's a, this, this is exactly why you should never ride the clutch. You know when people stop at stop streets and they leave the clutch in? This is what happens. Your release bearing gets hammered. If you're not using the clutch, take your foot off it. This, in effect, the foot was never off it because the clutch cable was too short. So that's why we had to do this. So we thought if we're taking the engine out to replace this little $20 part, we might as well have a look at the clutch, replace that, have a look at the oil seal or the crank seal, replace that. So get ready. We're just about to start. Yay, another Saturday. So here's the old pressure plate, as you can see, three finger. Um, I think this is original. Doesn't look in, doesn't look in bad shape though. It's got a bit of a score there, but that could be. 
Here's the old clutch plate. Well, I'd say it's actually a new clutch plate, relatively new. Um, here is a brand new clutch plate. Um, yeah, so in terms of wear, it's not worn. It's not worn at all, so we'll replace it, but whatever. I think the new, the, the three finger, it's not, it's not wearing evenly, but that could be the fact that the um, clutch release bearing was knackered. It probably wasn't engaging completely flat. But yeah, so we probably don't need to replace the clutch, but we've got one here, so we will anyway. Now we're gonna take the flywheel off. Okay, these are pretty tight, obviously. I think they've talked to 200 Newton meters or something. So you're gonna to have to jam it, top left, screwdriver against the, the mounting stud, jam that in there. We use this giant breaker bar and with a bit of leverage, you can loosen these. And eventually I'll get this one in. And, oops, hang on. It helps if you've got two people. It helps if you've got two people. And there we go. All right, bolts are out. Looks like it's got a key, so we don't really have to worry about marking. It'll only go back on one way, unless we get it in backwards, which we'll probably do. Okay. Flywheel's off, quite heavy as it should be. So there we go. Um, seal's pretty good. Seal looks very good actually. I don't think we need to replace it. There's a bit of oil here. Don't know where that's coming from. We'll clean it up and have a look. So here we are putting the um, flywheel back on. We think it's all good. Don't really know, but it only takes an hour to take the engine out. So if it's not good, we'll do it again. Uh, putting a little bit of Loctite one off nuts on these bolts which are one off they're stretch bolts so you you can't reuse them well you shouldn't reuse them and um just gonna put them on get them sort of tight and then we'll get get the torque wrench and tighten them down so here we have a torque wrench set to 44 newton meters it's a range 39.2 to 44 There we go. Oops. Ah. And I'll go around again just to make sure. There we go. Clutch centering tool, friction plate. Put the friction plate in. There's the clutch entering tool holding the friction plate in. Now I have the pressure plate. I will degrease the pressure plate. I will wipe it with the dirtiest and greasiest rag I can find. Not really. Well, sort of, but it's clean. And plus 29 horsepower will burn off any oil like this. I now Put that in there and you'll see as I put these screws in and tighten them down the clutch the pressure plate will engage it'll you, you, you'll watch they also torque those eh yeah and I'm sure you know the torque right I'll have to go and look for them again oh. they're low uh -huh, that's, yeah, I think we'll just do it by feel then Clutch is mounted. We use the centering tool, as you can see here. The centering tool went through, and it, it just makes sure. So, so we don't need the centering tool for the pressure plate because the pressure plate's located by these six bolts here. But the clutch is essentially until the pressure plate is engaged and and sandwiching the clutch between the pressure plate and the flywheel, we need a way of centralizing it. So this goes into the back of the crankshaft. This section here roughly fits the splines of the clutch. So we've got the clutch friction plate centered in relation to the pressure plate. So now when we swing the engine back in, once we get that clip to secure the um, clutch release bearing, 
which should arrive next week, um, we, should, we should all be good. And then what you do is you put the pressure plate on and you tighten it, and that engages the pressure. As, as you tighten these little bolts here, the pressure plate fingers go in. Yeah. And a bit of lubrica a minimal lubrication. You just of put a bit of grease on the splines so that when we slot it back together, we don't have to use too big a hammer. Bearing grease as well.